Okay, nowadays basically every tech company from Apple to Meta to Google is talking about smart glasses. But even though there's all of this hype around the product, all these companies keep failing at making them. For example, Apple's Vision Pro has done so badly that they've stopped production. Meta's prototype smart glasses called the Orion looked really promising but cost $10,000. So that's not going mainstream anytime soon. <laughs> oh, Snap made a pretty unusable pair of smart glasses as well and Google hasn't even tried to make one since the failure of the original Google Glass. So why is it that the most hyped product of the decade is also the one that everyone's failing to crack? What could be the secret ingredients to make a pair of smart glasses that could eventually be something everyone loves? Something that could even be bigger than the smartphone itself? Now, I've been thinking a lot about this and I actually think I've come up with the five secret ingredients that can help create a pair of smart glasses that all of us might want to buy and more importantly, actually like and use every day. Let me give you a quick one minute summary of where smart glasses as an industry lies today. The global smart Smart glasses market is actually pretty small. Most reports put it around a billion dollars or so of sales. Now this might seem large, but it's actually pretty small. By comparison, the smartphones market is 500 times larger at almost half a trillion dollars. Even if we take a more recent product, let's take the smartwatch, the market for that is about 30 times bigger at $30 billion. Now, even in the $1 billion smart glasses market, most of that number is actually enterprise products for things like manufacturing, surgeries, production lines, and so on. The consumer market for people like you and I who actually buy smart glasses is really small. Now, the big players in the consumer market for smart glasses today are uh, players like Meta with their Ray-Ban collaboration, Apple with their Vision Pro, and smaller players like Snap, even Reality, and so many more small startups and fragmented players. Now, every large and small company is taken or is taking a crack at making a smart glass. And whilst there's some great tech in these things so far, nothing has really Really come together to be something people buy. And in some cases, that's putting it mildly. Apple, for example, took a view to cram the maximum truly incredible tech into their Apple Vision Pro, but ended up making it way too unwieldy and robot-like for people to actually want to wear them. I mean, come on, even though they have some of the most advanced tech in any smart glasses, who wants to look like this guy? Not sure which muscle this guy is working on. Okay, wow, that's just downright dangerous, bro. Right, so Apple's approach clearly hasn't worked and they seem to know it. It's rumored that they recently even stopped production altogether because very few people bought it and most of the people who bought it actually returned it back to them. Meta took a crack at these smart glasses as well. They went in the exact opposite direction of Apple and simply put a camera, some speakers and some AI into a regular looking pair of sunglasses and saw some pretty decent customer response. But honestly, they aren't real smart glasses yet because they don't really have a display. Overall, a pretty simple product. But on the other hand, and they've actually launched a prototype pair of smart glasses called Orion, which actually look incredibly advanced and super exciting. But turns out that the cost to make these is $10,000 because they use silicon carbide, which is super expensive and very low in availability. So don't expect these to be anything more than a prototype for the foreseeable future. Then there's Google who decided that this is not just a hardware play, but actually a software play and announced Android XR, which is the first platform that can host smart glasses across manufacturers. And Google's previous attempt at smart glasses was called Google Glass was a complete and utter failure commercially with a product that I think was way ahead of its time. It had so much promise, but it did little more than start bar fights with people who didn't like someone else pointing a camera at them with their face. So what's the solution to all of this? I've been thinking a lot about this, and I think the problem lies in the way in which tech companies are thinking about the smart glasses as a product overall. The current thinking seems to basically be how do we take glasses and cram the most smartphone that we can into them? Let's create an operating system, lots of apps, uh, put notifications, social media, movies, and all kinds of cool stuff onto these people's smart glasses. But is that really what we want from smart glasses? I mean, sure, a few people might want this level of technology and functionality in their everyday glass, but I think most of us would find this pretty overwhelming. What if the consumer actually wants something else altogether? Let's try to articulate what a typical consumer might actually want. So here goes, Apple, Google, Meta, if you're watching this, and I'm sure you are, I'm going to try and speak on behalf of an average consumer and tell you what we might actually want from smart glasses. And it's five things. 
First, I think consumers want smart glasses to be an actual unique product with a specific value add in their life, not just a very overwhelming replacement for their smartphone. And I think there are several very specific use cases that would really appeal to most users. For example, a camera on the smart glass is actually quite useful to capture real life footage, especially for vloggers and creators and also people who just want to post to socials. But at the same time, people don't want to wear a camera on their face which makes them feel creepy in front of other people. So some kind of camera that's otherwise not seen unless revealed and when you're actually using it, maybe it has some kind of light so people know that you're using it. So people feel very comfortable and aware that someone's got a camera pointed at them and not that they're doing it sneakily. But at the same time, it's super important that the camera is easily accessible and activated and has excellent image stabilization so that you can actually use it on the go. Another feature a lot of people might pay for would be the ability to watch movies on a massive screen floating in front of you whilst on an airplane. But they don't want that screen around all the time and I'll talk more about this in a second. Or the most obvious use case that people would love would be using an AI assistant like ChatGPT or Gemini by talking to it live as you walk around the world and asking it useful questions about objects and monuments and directions. Something like what Google has called Project Astra on Gemini but load it onto a smart glass. Just imagine being able to enter your Airbnb and not needing to remember the code because you can just ask Gemini or pointing to a garment and just asking casually how you should wash it without spoiling it and then asking for help to figure out the washing machine settings which no one can really remember or figure out. Instead of having to go through complicated maps and websites, imagine just looking at a bus approaching you and asking your glass if it's going to take you where you want to go or being able to point to any random sculpture on the road and asking glass to be a personal guide and tell you a little bit about the history and origin of the piece. This stuff would be genuinely life-changing, right? And Google's Gemini isn't the only one with features that we can imagine would be super helpful on a smart glass. How about Meta's Life Translate feature that they just launched on the Ray-Ban sunglasses? It would be insane to visit any place in the world and be able to have a normal conversation with someone who doesn't speak English. Now, big caveat, of course, this life Live translation tech has been released but early testers are already saying that it looks promising but it still has a lot of lag and needs you to look at your phone sometimes which makes the entire experience of talking to someone using it not as natural. Which brings us to the second crucial feature that I think most consumers want out of smart glasses. We want all of the tech but we want to be able to interact with the world normally while wearing smart glasses. No compromises. If it holds us back even a little bit or makes things even a little awkward people will simply take them off or not buy them at all. Now, for starters, the company which didn't get this right at all was Apple with their Vision Pro. People want to be able to see through their smart glasses and have people be able to look at them and their eyes. We don't want a giant screen in front of our eyes, no matter how good that screen is. That has got to be the creepiest set of eyes I can imagine talking to. I mean, <laughs> no one can have a normal conversation looking at someone who looks like that. And don't get me wrong, the tech in the Apple Vision Pro was amazing. I mean, Nilay from The Verge put it best when he said that this is the best possible screen with the best pass-through that anyone could ever really develop, but it still sucks compared to reality. The Meta Ray-Ban sunglasses, on the other hand, are actually a step in the right direction on this one. They look and feel like totally normal sunglasses, but still have quite a few smart features in them like audio, a camera and an assistant. They don't have any visual input or screen on it though, so technically they aren't the kind of smart glasses we've been talking about. But they have done really well with this product because most of the time you're simply wearing a stylish pair of sunglasses with a very popular shape. But whenever you need it, you've got the AI assistant and camera right there to record some quick pictures or video or answer questions. But I think the best example that I've seen of something that looks like something I would wear every day comes from a company called Even Realities with their smart glasses called the G1, which looks so, well, normal, even stylish. I mean, I'm partial to a round pair of glasses anyway, and these seem like a style upgrade I would buy even if it was a non-smart pair. But they're actually quite smart in a minimalist sort of way. Which brings me to the third thing that consumers want. We want useful tech to be in our glasses, but also be kind of minimal. Let's take an example. You want to use Google Maps to navigate directions to the train station. Now, of course, everyone wants to map on their phone, but after that, when you're walking, you don't want to see the whole map in front of your eyes all the time. You probably want the glasses to be kind of like a companion device. Maybe something that puts a tiny arrow on the street you need to take a right or a left on. You might want to be able to talk to your glasses and ask it things like, how long till 
will I reach? Or is this the street that I need to turn on? Or this street is super crowded. Is there another way to get there? The idea is for it to be minimally intrusive on my vision, but maximally useful. And whatever happens, the golden rule has to be that it shouldn't distract my vision, especially when I'm on the road or crossing over unless I specifically stop and ask. Which brings me to number four. I think that consumers would really care about safety. We'd want ourselves and people around us to feel safe while using this product. If tech companies want smart glasses to actually become a mass consumer product, they're gonna to have to think a lot about how to make it minimally disruptive in public situations and really over-indexed on safety features. You know nowadays how they have smart entertainment systems in cars which you can't fiddle with until you physically stop the car? I think smart glasses need safety features like that. If cars need to be stationary to change the settings, I think that smart glasses should be banned from showing any screen content when you're moving around or there's roads or people or other things in your vision. It should only be able to play audio or music or the voice assistant or record video without showing it to you at these times. Exactly the same as when you drive your car. You can talk to Siri or Gemini, you can listen to music and have Siri talk back to you, but your vision has to always be locked in the road. Now, if you really want to access an app or some other screen in front of your eyes, you should ideally need to come to a complete stop and ask it to unlock the screen temporarily. Of course, when you're in a home environment or on an airplane in airplane mode, it should allow screen features to come on too. I think that Google and Apple and others should use the multimodal AI capabilities they all now have to make sure that the right safeguards are put in place, which might just allow people and the relevant government authorities, by the way, to actually be able to trust, commission, and use this device. Which brings me to number five, the price. We need smart glasses to actually be affordable. Look, we all know that for a while, smart glasses are gonna be an early adopter product and a novelty buy at most for many people. If these companies actually make this a mass product, these companies are going to need to keep prices really low to encourage more people to buy them. Let's take the example of a folding phone, something like the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold I have right here. Apart from that terrible name, this phone is actually great. I have a full video on how much I love it and I'll leave a link below. And I actually think that most people would actually love having a second screen hidden inside a normal sized phone with a screen outside which has no compromises. But almost no one buys folding phones today and the reason is the insanely high price. This phone costs a whooping $1,800 of pounds or almost two lakh rupees. But on the other hand, if you think of the Meta Ray-Ban sunglasses we talked about, those cost between $350 and $500 of pounds. And because they're relatively more affordable, they've actually sold more than 1 million units already. That's not bad. But as we said, they don't have a screen, so they're not really smart glasses. Real smart glasses with a screen haven't been cheap to make at all. Apple's Vision Pro almost cost $4,000 a pound and Mark Zuckerberg's prototype Orion glasses cost almost $10,000 to make. Now, all new technologies need scale economies to get cheaper, especially as tech companies can start to produce the required input materials at scale and also start to recover their early R&D investment. But it's going to take a while to produce a smart glass under $1,000, which makes it at least possibly something that people start to buy, which I think is the price limit beyond which people aren't really going to treat this seriously. Not every single big tech company has announced its intention to win in this market and Google has already released a new platform called Android XR to host it. So 2025 is going to be a super exciting year to see the release of the first few mainstream smart glasses. But the real question is going to be, can they actually make it something that people want or will it continue to be a more overwhelming smartphone? But wait, what do you think are the features you need to actually want to buy a smart glass? Let me know in the comments and also watch my video on why I think the smart glass could actually replace the iPhone as Apple's crown jewel product in just a decade from now. I'll leave a link to it right here and see you there.